It's time to meet your mentors. Hello, everybody. This is KCSB FM in Santa Barbara, 91.9 on your radio dial. My name is Kian Zamuda, and you are listening to Meet Your Mentors, where we talk with faculty and staff here at UCSB about who they are, what they do, and what life at UCSB is all about. So we have a very special guest with us today. He is from the Materials Department and Department of Chemistry and Biochemistry here at UCSB. He is a professor and the co-director of the Materials Research Laboratory here at UCSB. Please welcome Dr. Ram Sashadri. Thank you for being here, Professor. Um, I'm very happy to be here, Keon. Thank you. Thank you. All right. So, yeah, we have a big show for, uh, for everyone today. And uh, just to start with, uh, we want to ask you a little bit about what courses you teach here and what they entail. Um, at the undergraduate level, I typically teach in uh, a course that's called 100A. It's an introduction to uh, material science and engineering, and it's taken by uh, juniors and seniors across a number of departments. And this past quarter, in the fall, I had 80 students. Uh, uh, I also teach, uh, every second year, I teach some undergraduate freshman chemistry, uh, typically at the honors uh, level, so it's chemistry 2C. And at the graduate level, my teaching revolves around uh, uh, understanding the properties of materials and where they come from. Wow, that sounds that sounds very exciting. Properties, materials, and where they come from. That's right. Why do two different materials behave uh, uh, very differently in the in the different functions they serve? You know, why are some materials magnets and not others? For example. Right. Very cool. Very cool. And um, where did you receive this knowledge, and what majors did you study in? I studied chemistry, and I studied in India. So uh, I was a, I had a bachelor's degree in chemistry from a college in New Delhi in India called St. Stephen's. Uh, and then I carried out my graduate research in Bangalore in India at the Indian Institute of Science in a subject that is called solid-state chemistry. I mean, it's not a widely used term, but it's a sort of sub-discipline on its own, solid-state chemistry. And then I was a postdoctoral fellow in France and in Germany for a few years before I became a professor. And I spent, as a professor, I spent three years in India, and uh, then I came here in 2002. Uh, where does my knowledge come from is a really interesting question because uh, it's, Knowledge is an infinite pool, so it keeps coming, you know. And it it came, of course, from, from my teachers, from my books, from my father as the son of a scientist. So I learned a lot from him. And I often think that I probably learned more from him than anyone else. And uh, But it keeps coming. It, today it comes from my students. Great, great. And what have you learned from your students? A lot of things. I presume you mean science, okay? because I've also learned, for example, I spoke about magnets. You know, there's a song by the insane clown posse about magnets. Interesting. It isn't polite. Uh, it isn't and that, polite? that my students taught me. But uh, a whole bunches of things. I mean, they, they constantly, it's, there's a constant exchange of, of ideas. So you have to remember that, and actually all of us have to remember that we are in a pretty special place. We are a AAU university, a highly research active university. There are only 62 such universities in the U.S. and Canada, and we are in one of them. And 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 uh, the difference between us and other places, many other places, is that we don't just consume knowledge. We produce knowledge. We create knowledge. We win Nobel Prizes for the knowledge we create. So, so this knowledge comes out of a sort of intellectual ferment. It comes out of an exchange of ideas between undergraduates, graduates, postdocs, faculty, staff. You know, it's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's an exciting ride. Right. Everyone helps out in uh, creating new knowledge for us. And, and pushing the frontiers of knowledge, of discovery. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Great. And then um, just before we get to our first break, uh, I just wanted to ask you a little bit about your music taste. Uh, what is your favorites and why? Well, my musical tastes go all over the place. Uh, I listen to uh, a lot of classic rock, like Pink Floyd. I yeah. think uh, 
you're going to play Pink Floyd, uh, you know, uh, uh, Guns N' Roses, uh, that kind of thing. I also tend to listen to quite a bit of classical music, and okay. I like to go to the Santa Barbara Symphony and to the programs that Arts and Lectures has. Uh, uh, and we are lucky to have organizations like this in Santa Barbara and in the university. And I also listen to some Indian classical music, uh, uh, the sitar, for example, mm-hmm. which is also an instrument that is played in Iran, yes. but it's a popular instrument in India. Interestingly, I listened to uh, a, a gentleman called uh, uh, Ali Akbar Khan, who plays an instrument called the sarod, and the recordings I listened to, many of them were made in Santa Barbara. Really? Yeah. Wow. Well, we have some uh, Indian classical music coming from Santa Barbara. That's yep. pretty cool. So yeah, maybe yeah, we will get to some more of that music uh, later in the show. And uh, for now, uh, we are with uh, Ram Sashadri, and he is a professor uh, in the materials department and Department of Chemistry and Biochemistry here at UCSB. And this is Meet Your Mentors. I'm Keon, and we're going to be right back after this short break. We're going to play Arnold Lane by Pink Floyd. We'll see you in a little bit. Hello, everyone. We are back. This is KCSB FM 91.9 on your radio dial. My name is Keon, and you are listening to Meet Your Mentors. And we are here with Dr. Ram Sashadri from the Materials Department here at UCSB and um, the Department of Chemistry and Biochemistry. And we are talking a little bit about what materials is exactly. So if you could uh, elaborate on that, Dr. Well, you look around the world, uh, look, look at the world around you, and there is always something, there are always things. Many of these things are uh, the, the product of human ingenuity. And in fact, even the epochs of human progress have been measured by the typical materials classes that people use, you know, stones in the Stone Age, and, right. and, uh, and iron in the Iron Age, and, and sometimes fancifully our current era is referred to as the Silicon Age. And all of these things 
that we use and that we use to particularly to advance new technologies uh, uh, are based on materials. Iron is a material. But iron on its own is actually not a terribly interesting material. It becomes interesting when you put a little bit of carbon in it and then it becomes steel. Mm -hmm. If you use it in your home, it also sometimes has a little bit of chromium in it to make it stainless steel. So these are all basically the subjects that we study. My own research is particularly focused on functional materials. So stainless steel would be considered a structural material. Its job is to contain my food on the stove top. Right. But a functional material does something extra, like a magnet would be a functional material. right? Or, uh, uh, for example, the many ele materials that we use in electronics. The... Uh, let me give you an example of some advanced materials. Sure, sure. Tweeters. You see these loudspeakers in front of you. Right. You know, the things on top are called tweeters. Tweeters. Uh, tweeters. They, they, do, they deliver the high frequencies. And tweeters are actually the subject of some pretty advanced materials research. Oh. So high-end tweeters are sometimes made from thin diamond films. From diamond films? Diamond films. They're wow. made from thin films of diamond. That's They're, an expensive speaker. They can be expensive. It's a company called B&W specializes in diamond films. Uh, at, in my home, the tweeters are made from a metal called beryllium, which you don't frequently find around and actually quite toxic. If, mm -hmm. So I often think what would happen if my home caught on fire? I'd be creating this toxic metal dust in my home. Oh, uh, man. Uh, but, but there's specific reasons why these materials are used. So speak... So the tweeters, the materials in the tweeters have to be very stiff and yet very light because they have to vibrate fast. But if they were heavy, every time they vibrated, there'd be a lot of inertial mass. There'd be a lot of inertia, right? right. You can imagine if you try and shake a heavy object, it's hard to stop. A light object is easier to stop. So these special materials are chosen because they're light and stiff. So these are all the subjects of materials inquiry. We're constantly looking at new ways of making things better. My favorite current example is the Tesla. Mm -hmm. You yeah. wouldn't have the Tesla if you didn't have lithium batteries. And lithium batteries are just a huge advance over other kinds of batteries that simply would not have had allowed such a car to exist. Yeah. So that's something we research too, actually, right. at UCSB. Yeah, batteries. the same lithium Ion batteries that you have in your computers. Right? In your computers. In fact, you know that the Tesla actually has something like 7,000 laptop batteries yeah. that powers it. Wow. So uh, they chose an unusual way to sort of assemble the batteries to power the car. No one right. would have thought that that's a good way to do it. Right. All the batteries on the bottom of the car. Which gives the car a very low center of gravity, yes. which makes it amazing at handling. And very fast. Those cars Very fast. Are Fast. They are indeed. They accelerate like crazy. Like three seconds. Under zero three to sixty. Seconds. Unbelievable. If you're a car enthusiast, check out the Teslas. You probably already have. But um, so then, yeah, these materials you need. Don't you need materials to make materials? Isn't that right? Typically, we make them from the elements. So, right. so you go to a mine. If you want lithium for your lithium battery, you go to a mine in Bolivia. You get some lithium source, and then it's extracted from that. So this is an old science. Right. what's called extractive metallurgy. It's been practiced since people started looking for gold nuggets and since people started using copper and bronze. So that's an old science. There's not a lot new there. Uh, maybe there's something new in how people try to recover metals from, from used objects, but mostly we assume that we have the metals from which we can start to make things. Right, and then you make the incredible things that help run this world and this interview as we speak. As we speak. After this, uh, we are going to talk a little bit about advice for students, and then we are going to get into his hobbies. And um, again, this is Meet Your Mentors with Keon and Dr. Ram Sashadri is our great guest today. And we are going to be right back after Where the Sour Turns to Sweet by Genesis. So see you in a few. Join us now We need you with us Come and join us now inside. 
inside your mind See the darkness is creeping out I can see the softness there Where the sunshine is gliding in Fill your mind with love Find the world of future glory You can meet yourself Where the sour turns to sweet Leave your ugly selfish shell To melt in the glowing flames Can you sense the change? See your eyes now listen We're waiting for you I'll Come and join us now We want you with us Come and join us now Paint your face all white To show the peace inside Drift away while the saffron burns To the land where the rainbow ends Can you sense the change? See your eyes in focus We're waiting for you Now. We need you with us. Come and join us now. We're waiting for you. Come and join us now. We need you with us. Come and join us now. We want you with us Come and join us Hello everyone, we are back. This is KCSB FM in Santa Barbara, 91.9 on your radio. I am Keon, and you are listening to Meet Your Mentors, where we talk with faculty and staff here at UCSB about everything, and it's a lot of fun. Today we have a professor from the Materials Department and the Department of Chemistry and Biochemistry. He is the co-director of the Materials Research Laboratory, and we are continuing on with our show. Uh, this is with Dr. Ram Sashadri, and we are just getting into the last portion, and we are just wanting to ask you a little bit about what advice you have to students here at UCSB. Well, you know, there's a line from Oscar Wilde, the only thing to do with advice is to pass it on. So I'm always a little cautious of about, you know, being very glib and passing on advice because people have such different life experiences, and they come to every place with sort of all sorts of baggage, you know. So, but... But I would say try and be as engaged as possible. Try and get involved in research. Um, UCSB is actually proud of the fact that so many of the students here uh, are doing some some sort of knowledge creation, which is research. And that's a wonderful thing. Uh, But enjoy your time at UCSB. I mean, you're not going to get back your uh, college years. so, So enjoy it. And one way of enjoying it is actually to be committed to what you're doing, you know. If you're going to class, don't uh, go to class simply because you have to. Go to class because you're going to learn something. And if you pay attention, I can tell you that you're going to enjoy it a lot more. Right, right. So basically, engagement is what I think is the key here. Yeah, engagement. And last but not least, um, your hobbies. Well, my hobbies, uh, I, 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 I do a bunch of things. Uh, in my spare time, I I take pictures, I listen to music, I read. Um, I would I would say one of my hobbies, sort of a lifelong passion, is just collecting information. A lot of it is really stupid information. <laughs> For example, the first song you played, Arnold Lane. Right. I actually know some of its history. You know really? that that they were that these were Pink Floyd's a group of kids from Cambridge, Cambridge University. They're all pretty highly educated. And they wrote the song about 
some guy that one of them knew as a kid who was somewhat mentally unstable and he used to steal sheets hmm. bed That's sheets what, bed sheets as people hung out their la- laundry you know this is england in a time when washing when clothes dryers i guess were not so common and he'd he'd go and steal sheets uh, presumably he stole other things from the line too but but sheets is uh, is the line in the song oh. uh, and uh, and uh, one of the early pink floyd members said barrett for whom the song wish you were here which is one of their most famous songs was written himself actually suffered a lot from uh, mental health issues uh, later later in his life so uh, yeah so that's my hobby collecting absolutely useless information <laughs> well you never know when that information could be useful yeah, mostly it isn't i can assure <laughs> mostly you mostly it isn't No, I'm sure it's very. Well, uh yeah, thank you again uh for sharing your hobbies and thank you again for being on the show. That takes us to the um last bit of our show and for the rest of uh this hour we're going to play a little bit more psychedelic and progressive rock sort of genre music and it's going to be a lot of fun. So, thank you again Dr. Sashadri for being on the show. Thank you, Kian. It's been a lot of fun. It was a lot of fun. Thank you. All right. And now we're going to have Uh this next song is My Sunday Feeling by Jethro Tull. See you shortly.
heart's getting louder My love's getting stronger And the sun's getting brighter Things are getting blurred Only getting stranger The sky's becoming so obscure I won't try and change her He tries to encase her He tries to haze her Why do you hate me?
from the cold of feeling that you shouldn't be here. The conversation's going on, but nobody speaks clear. Give another try and maybe you'll keep from getting so crazy. You'll keep from getting so laid away. What's up, everyone? This is KCSB 91.9 FM. My name is Keon, and you are listening to Meet Your Mentors, where we talk with faculty and staff here at UCSB about who they are, what they do, and what life at UCSB is all about. Woo! Yes, that is the sound we make after we conclude the interviews. Woo! Yep, just like that. Okay, so we have a... uh, a little bit more uh, show left for you guys today. We had Dr. Ram Sashadri on the show. And next week we'll be having Dr. Seton Coach on the show from the Computer Science Department, which is going to be a lot of fun. We have been playing some music throughout the show. The last 30 minutes, of course, because the first 30 minutes were interview time. So this is the last 30 minutes. And we're going to have uh, a couple more songs to take us to the end of the hour. And these are going to be some psychedelic rock uh, type songs. So this is going to be a lot of fun, and we have just a couple more minutes. So you just heard um, The Good Morrows, Spaceman by The Good Morrows. Then you heard, or before that, was The Hunt by Relics of Rock. And there was also uh, Gods Are Bored by The Datsuns. And um, we're going to have the next one. It's going to be My Love by Husk, and I think you're going to like that too. 
All right, so, yeah, we're going to play that, and we'll see you in a little. Okay.
Hello, everyone, and thank you for listening. This is Meet Your Mentors on KCSB 91.9 FM. My name is Keon, and as we do every week at 4, we have mentors from UCSB come on the show. This week, we had Dr. Ram Sashadri. Next week, we got Dr. Seton Coach from the Computer Science Department, so tune in. Same time, Tuesdays at 4 p.m. You just heard Logo Center by Whitewash and My Love by Husk. So that was really cool, and that takes us to the end of our show. So... This is me signing out, and as always, go Gauchos! See you next week.